producers, it's Özgün here. In this tutorial, we are gonna take a look how to make percussive techno big room drops, and I'm gonna be inspired from Vivek's latest rave culture set. He played several ideas on the set, and most of them got really perfect percussion grooves. And I like to share how to make this kind of tracks with you. And if you're ready, let's get into that tutorial. So let's put a kick because we are gonna first create the main groove of the track and I'm gonna make the percussion drop lead after I find my groove. So I'm gonna use the medics kick. Uh, it sounds like that. Let's disable limiter in here. And I'm gonna put a clipper just to give several dBs boost. You know me, I like to, you know, work with a bit uh, maximized project then I get more impact on the sounds. The kick is sounds like that. I choose the kick because the transient was kinda small, not overtaking, and, and this is what I heard in the Vivex Rave Culture set. So let's copy the drums like that, and now we can work on the bass line. So for the bass line, like two weeks ago, I think I already paused how to make rolling bass lines. That's why I'm not gonna redo the same stuff and like to show you some different approach. That's why I like to go flex. There are some really cool uh, rolling bass preset in here. If I go choose bass, I probably favorite it already. Yeah, like this preset sounds really nice. It's already what I'm looking for. Maybe we can go organized. Let's call it bass. And let's send the kick to number one. And if my kick is F, so let's go make the bass line in F. The good thing I like with this uh, flex preset, it has a cool groove inside of it. And it's kind of not hitting at the same time all the time. It's sometimes sweeping left and right just a little bit. And it's giving me a really nice groove. So let's get a side chain by holding alt. I can just lock to grids. It's not necessary in the ending. But it's good to, you know, lock it to the very half. And then my kick is ending in half. So I can make a curve like that. And the recently I learned if you put some smooth, maybe 5%, it's become more smooth. So I'm gonna use it. So let's get rid of delay and reverb. And I like to add EQ and overdrive. So let's work on the signal. We can make it bigger. I like to boost the very sub frequencies. So I'm gonna put LFO tool and span in the master so I can see what's going on clearly. And that's pretty much it for the kick and bass for now. Depends on the situation, we can give a little bit more bass boost, but we will see about it when we have rest of the sounds. So let's loop the section. And um, before I add this clap, I like to go to flex. Because if you are going to use percussive sounds, which contains several transients, like, like all the clicks, all the drums, if you just lower the cutoff from the bass, so which means you are removing some transients, some high information on the bass, you are going to have much more space in for the percussive drums, and it's gonna help us to get a really clean mix down. So now I'm gonna just lower the Flex Master cutoff and you will see the difference. So if you check span, now we have more space for the mid frequencies, the upper mids, the high frequencies, now the bass is not taking over that space. 
Um, before I add the percussive loops, I like to quickly add some claps. I'm taking away some of the low frequencies. I'm not gonna overprocess it. It's just enough for now. And now I like to drag drop this hi hat. It's again from Medic's pack. He got really cool sounds. If you don't check the pack, I suggest you to do it. So I'm gonna put some hats like that. But if you see, there are some problems. The head's kind of, you know, too long. It's overtaking much of the space that we need. So to prevent that, this is what you always should do when you are, you know, working on drums, when you are building the groove. Always go to your sample and check ADSR settings. So in here, we only gonna work with decay and make the sample a bit shorter. But it's best if you do it with listening with the kick. Okay, now we have this loop. So I'm quickly balancing it. Also, maybe we can shorten the clip and I like to put some ending variation let's make it longer oh that can work I'm giving a little bit more gain since I have headroom. And yeah, now we can work on the percussive main sound. So let's add perk lead channel here. So to be fast, I like to use the sound that I find in the same medic spec. The percussion sounds like that. So the main thing is your percussion should have a tonality and a note, uh, a key. And then if you find like organic sounds like that, it's going to work better. Like you can get more close to Vivex style. So now we are going to pitch this one or we don't even need to pitch it. You know, we can just put it on stretch mode. So when we are playing it on the another note, the note is going to be accurate. If you put it on resample, the key is going to change. It's not gonna work when you calculate it, it's gonna be different. So I'm gonna use stretch mode. Let's sound it to here, call it lead. First thing I like to do is always making my signal bigger. And I like to sidechain the percussion so I can test it out while I'm listening my drop. Maybe before processing it, we can write the MIDI. So in the MIDI, if our key is F, and if the sample is on C, which means I can use the piano roll and it's gonna be accurate on the notes. I like to use the MIDI a little bit of shorter, not covering whole beat. So for now, I like to mute the clap moment. 
probably if it's best, like uh, we can make this groove stuff on the drums after we determine our main rhythm for the percussions. Then they might clash. But yeah, let's keep working on it. So I can just loop it. So in here, like it depends on the track or the vibe you are going. You can always go like make some melodies with it. Something like that. But now I like to focus on just a single note percussive loop. Maybe we can go crazy on the ending of the four bar. Even crazy. Not bad. So once you have this, um, let's press Alt Q. Let's make the start time zero because now we are going to work on the levels. Maybe we can choose. I'm not sure. Like, let's choose funky drummer. So the Techno 2 preset just seems to be working. I'm gonna accept it. Now I'm gonna go choose Not Pen. And in the like ending the fast moment, why not we do, why not we are doing something like that? Maybe we can just randomly pen everything. So you can always get creative and try to try to get some moments on the little details uh, because it's repetitive. But if you work on the details, it's not going to sound boring. And yeah, now let's again choose Alt Q. But this time we are not going to work on the levels. We are going to work on grooves. I'm going to choose Swing preset in here. And you don't need to touch the velocity. Now we are going to work on start time. And when you push the start time knob, it's going to shift several notes a bit late. And you are going to get more humanized groove. So again, it's best if we decide it while we are listening the full context. <laughs> So like 25% seems to be working with the rest of the context. Now let's process the percussion. I'm gonna put a love cut here. Again, I'm gonna listen it at least with kick and bass. Let's dip it a little bit. So the main problem is with this kind of samples. So this sample is prepared by Medix uh, for the note of C, right? Because we are using it on F, there will be some unwanted resonating frequencies. If you have, you can just find it and dip it. You don't need to dip it that much. Just a little bit is enough. And maybe I can boost the low mids so we can get more body. For that, I'm looking to the span and I'm trying not to be bigger, not to be louder than my bass. If you check the percussion, you will see it in the low mids. So my point is, it shouldn't be bigger than my kick and bass. They can be even, but yeah, the kick and bass should be the biggest element all the time. Okay, let's leave it like that. 
Also, we can put a transient processor because we have much more space for percussion loop. Uh, we cut the bass upper frequencies, so we have space. So why not boost the transient just 10 or 15 percent so we can get more present percussion sound. <laughs> Let's leave it like that. And I like to still boost the sound. That's why I'm gonna give it a bit tickify. It generates some harmonics and make the signal bigger. And the best thing with the plugin is this plugin can auto gain. So you don't need to adjust the output gain. So it's adding a really subtle change, but it makes sense in the whole context. So I think it's time for some reverb. Let's make something like that. I'm giving some pre-delay so it doesn't get interfere with my percussion and probably I will go like 5, 4 or 5 seconds of decay and maybe we can give some stereo separation so the reverb, the wet uh, sound of the plugin can be a bit wider so maybe we don't need any bass probably this should work <laughs> And before reverb, we can add a delay. Let's go pin pong and make it a bit silent. And I like to like go three as my time. If I'm using a regular rhythm, the three time on the delay sounds really decent in my opinion. It's like kind of polyrhythmic and I love how it fills the gaps on the MIDI. So let's uh, go to the very beginning part of the chain and add a peak controller and let's link uh, the delay and reverb to the peak controller so we can sidechain the FX with our original dry signal and we will get more clean sound. <laughs> and let's put OTT. Let's make it like 15 or 20 percent. That is my sweet spot. Like if I'm using it after my delay and reverb, I'm using it for gluing every FX to a one sound. So for that, I like to, let's say, give five decibel of input gain, 5.5, and I'm reducing the same amount. And now I'm going to just work on the thresholds and work on the output gains for each knob, each band and we are gonna just glue and color the signal while we are listening it with the full context. Sounds really decent. I'm probably the last thing I'm gonna add. Uh, let's put it after OTT. Uh, this patch of mine, Endless Cry. So I'm just gonna create an automation for that. And when we are making this uh, crazy move in here, let's see, where is it? Yeah, in this section, maybe we can give a bit of washout fix. It can be more interesting. <laughs> Okay, now let's listen to everything.
sounds really decent. Now I'm gonna use this Kashmir loop. And if I just put it really back off the mix, it can create a really cool, like polyrhythmic feel. And again, I'm gonna go to Kashmir Pack. I'm gonna use this loop. So because this is on the Phrygian mode, as my experience with these percussive loops, if you use the Phrygian scale, you are gonna get more close to the vibe that you are looking for. Let's uh, fit this sample to our track. So it's D sharp. If I put it two semitone up, it becomes my key F. Put it here, call it Vox. So it's just the sake of the tutorial. I'm not gonna process or do anything with the vocal. All I'm gonna do is just, you know, EQ on sidechain. So it sounds like that now. Probably we can put it to stretch. What about stretch pro? Okay, I like the, the chorus because I like to hear the vocals a bit wider. So this can be the theme, the main idea for the track, and this can be the drop. If I make this as a full track, I will use this structure. Yeah, it's kind of sounds like that. We didn't even properly mix this, but it's already sounds so big and fresh. So without processing, the percussion sound is like that. But with the processing, we just convert this to a festival weapon. Yeah guys, this is how we get the percussive drop vibes like Vivek tracks. I hope you can learn something from it and apply it to your own productions. Today that was it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.